Aloha, shalom. Today is Monday, AKA Moon Day, which is why I'm wearing white. And I love that these activations uh, use the moon as a measurement of time. So I'm feeling very aligned today. Um, and what I'm finding so far with my little color experiment matching my clothes to the planet of the day <clears throat> is that it's doing something for me subconsciously. It's like some sort of subconscious organization for my mind and I'm enjoying that experiment. So I'm just having fun with it. So today is white. Wear white Monday, moon day. For those of you who are new to these activations, they don't actually have anything to do with the moon other than the fact that we use it as a measurement of time so that we can all gather four times a month. And these activations have been going on for years. So a pretty cool community of awesome folks from around the world has built around these activations. And that's my favorite part about it. So in the comments, let me know where you're tuning in from. And as usual, well, most of the time, I'm tuning in from Sedona, Arizona. Magical, magical land of the Red Rocks. Where are you tuning in from? Ah. So the final quarter activation is all about the end of the lunar cycle. It's all about the end of the monthly cycle. So last week we had the full moon. We saw the full picture, fully illuminated picture of what was going on, right? Because everything around us is a reflection of what's going on within us. So the full moon is always a reflection of coming to this fullness of the picture, discovering the full truth about what we've been experiencing all month. Louisiana, Ontario, Canada, Portland, UK, England. What's up world? So that was last week. We saw the whole picture of what's been going on. It's been revealed. And now we're coming to a point where we're gonna close up this cycle. I like to call the final quarter moon the in-between week because we close up last month's cycle and we prepare for next month's cycle. The new moon is coming next week. So we're in between, one foot in the old, one foot in the new. The better we can honor the ending, the better we can honor a new beginning. Awesome. Another Canada, Arizona, Fort Myers, Florida, Poland, Queens, New York. My hometown. Yeah. So good to see you guys all tuning in. I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle in your energies while you all pop in from around the world. So this activation should give us an encouraging and inspirational message for the week ahead that's going to show us how best to organize our energies in a way that will help us close up this past cycle and prepare for a new one. So just take one moment whenever you're ready to let go of everything, let go of it all whatever thoughts have been on repeat in your mind, whatever heaviness you're carrying, let it go just for this moment. Just see yourself, feel yourself, perceive yourself as completely empty. <clears throat> as though together we are just one big giant empty bowl waiting to be filled with light. Or use your imagination, you can do it however you want. Just imagine we're some sort of an empty vessel about to be filled. And if you're already full with your own thoughts and feelings, then we can't allow for any divine inspiration to come in. So let's just create the space, which really we don't need to create anything. Everything already exists. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So what is the greatest space that already exists? It's the infinite space of the heart where you and I meet as one. So let's meet there here now. And go ahead and jump into the deck. See yourself and everybody tuned in right now and everybody who will tune into this recording later as becoming one and jumping into the deck. I don't care how you do it. Use your imagination. That's the key. Just have fun and connect to the deck. Remembering that these characters, these drawings, these symbols are representing fundamentally operative laws that are always in operation. They're representing angles of the one mind of which we are all a part, the universal mind. They're also representing angles of the individual mind. They're representing pieces of wisdom that live within our own hearts. So just remember that. 
This is nothing far out. It's not anything woo woo. It's not something that is apart from you. In fact, nothing is, nothing is separate from you. These are just symbols that are representing archetypal wisdom that lives deep inside each of our hearts and minds. That's all. So what we're about to do, for those of you who are new, is just extract a simple message of wisdom that is light and inspirational that can unite us and carry us through the week ahead with grace and unity. Unity, 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 unity is the key. We're uniting in this message. Doesn't have to be a big deal. It's just a simple, sweet message that we're all gonna share together. That's all. And I invite you to, right now, share this video on your friends' walls, your family's walls. Maybe there's a group that you're a part of that you think would appreciate getting in the portal live right now. So maybe take a second to do that before we begin. Or you may feel like you'd rather wait till the end to see what's up and share the recording. The video will also be loaded to YouTube and Instagram. Just search Rebecca Magic. So if anyone doesn't have Facebook, they can find it there after. Then I'm going to take out my Hebrew cards, as I usually do. As I've been doing pretty consistently, I guess. They look like this. Just going to give those a shuffle as well. So, what is the thing that we need to close up, the energy that we need to close up to move ahead for the new moon next week? What's something that's ready to be sealed, finished, and left behind? Not really left behind. There is no behind or front or side or everything is one. There's no direction, really. There's just one point. <laughs> the light is infinitely emitting itself from so we're not really leaving anything behind everything goes with us the light that we cultivate travels with us for eternity so but for lack of a better word what's the energy that we're ready to leave behind ready to close up so that we can free up our energies to move through the current challenge and gift which becomes the bridge to the future How is our environment either supporting or not supporting this? What tips can we get from our reflections in our environment, basically? And then with the Hebrew cards, who's the ally for the week ahead? Okay. Just to show you what it looks like. The setup looks like this. And we begin. So something that we need to leave behind for last month's cycle. Three of Pentacles. And this card is all about working together with others in order to form a plan, a strategy, and bring it to life. Working with others to manifest things, to create. That's all. So and we'll see more about this card as we move forward with the reading, but basically what, what it's looking like is it's time to really focus inward. It's time to go inward. Stop worrying so much about who we're going to do these projects with. Stop worrying so much about, you know, uh, whether or not the relationships in our life right now are going to be lasting or what they're going to look like, how it's all going to play out. Stop trying so hard to put the pieces together. Well, let's just see how it connects to this. Okay, so as I said, it would get more clear as we move forward. And you can see it's the same suit, pentacles. So let's continue on. The knight of pentacles is the challenge and gift as we move ahead. So it looks like it's time to start a new project, put things in motion. Maybe some ideas we've been sitting on, it's time to start them. And so what it looks like when these two connect is like this. As we move ahead, 
and put a fire under our ass and really start working on those projects we've been wanting to work on or maybe new, entirely new ideas manifest as we move in that new direction. Because regardless, it's going to be a new direction. We're either starting projects that we put on the back burner, so that's, that's going to be new, or we're going to get totally new inspiration, right? So as we move on this new path of creation, the co-creation will become clear who we're meant to work with, why we're meant to work with them, and when we're meant to work with them is all going to become clear. We first need to sit with the inspiration of what it is we really want to do and just begin that project. Don't think about what the other person wants to do, what everyone else wants to do, what your lover, mother, sister, brother wants to do. What do you want to do right now? How do you want to focus your creative energies? What do you want to manifest? And from there, it will determine how your relationships will flow. So we don't need to try so hard to decide who is going to be on my team for this project, you know? Also, if we focus too much on who is going to be a part of my team, we, what happens is we give up our power by coming out of our center and putting too much of our thoughts into what does that person want? What does that person want to create or manifest? And what happens subconsciously is then we compromise our own ideas, our own visions, and our own desires because we fawn or we bend ourselves to, we manipulate ourselves to satisfy the desires and needs and expectations of others. And it's not even their fault, it's our own fault. We give up our power willingly when we do this and you know, however, unconsciously, but still willingly. So whether we're doing it consciously or unconsciously, we're, we're willingly giving up our power. And it's no one else's fault if we don't claim our path as, as ours and someone else takes the reins on our, our life, it's not really, you know, we can't really blame them. We can't really blame them. No one can make you do anything. If you fill your life with what it is you want to do, no one can come in and shake you or break you. If you fully focus your energies on walking that path that you know in your heart you're meant to walk, no one can come in and move you from that path. No one can shake you. You will be so fiercely on it that the contrast of someone else's crappy and weak little manipulative games next to your passion will be so great. Like, think about it. If you're on your path and you're feeling so good about your path and your creative passion is flowing, Someone comes in and says, hey, let's go this way instead. Let's do this instead. And you're like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm focused. I'm doing my thing. So the more you put your heart and mind into what it is you love to do onto the path that you're walking, the more you infuse that enthusiasm into what it is you're doing, your path the less someone can come in and shake you or break you or try to make you go in a different direction. It's like laughable at that point. In fact, you even have more compassion when someone then tries, attempts, attempts to come in and manipulate you because you don't even have time to be upset or take it personally and you understand that they're doing it out of hurt or out of ignorance or whatever it is. But you're so on your path that you don't have time to be moved from that. So that's really the point. So we're leaving behind this need to form a team or overanalyze our relationships and how they fit into our lives. How, how is it all going to work out? How could I possibly stay friends with this person? How could I possibly have a healthy relationship with that person? How can I make this person be my ally or my business partner or my lover or my whatever. You don't have to make them be anything. You don't have to overthink how this person or that person is going to fit in your life. Just get on track with what it is you want to manifest. Get back to that space. And you'll be surprised. Maybe those people who have recently come into your life will so perfectly fit into that plan. Or maybe you get so clear on that plan that you realize, ouch, like, Actually, these, these people don't have a place 
in my life right now. And that's a-okay. And then you get the clarity that you need to then take the accountability to communicate to that person or those people that, hey, it's not going to work out. But you no longer are doing it from a place of fear or anxiety because you're feeling confident in your plan and your path and you know what must you know what must be done so that's the difference when we get really clear with this right now what it is we want to manifest what it is we want to do and remember this is the challenge so it's going to take some of us are more on the challenge side. Some are more on the gift side of this. It's going to be more challenging for some than it is for others. But just remember, if you don't know exactly what it is you want to do yet, that's okay. Just first plant the seed that, hey, first I have to figure that out before I can start overanalyzing all my relationships. The relationships fit in after you follow your heart's desire. Don't know what it is? Okay, take a step back. Meditate on it. Think about it for a little bit. Get back in your body, first of all. Because right now, our minds are all attached to things that are outside of us, situations that are outside of us. This person, that person, he said this, she said that. We're so materialistically entangled in relationship matters that we're forgetting about the relationship with self. We just need to come back to self. When we come back to self, then we can think on what self needs to do next. Because we're active beings. We're here to act. We're not here to just sit on a mountaintop forever. We're here to actually act, right? So before we can act, we have to figure out what it is in our hearts and our minds we want to act upon for the greatest good of ourselves and the one and all. So in order to get to that point, come back to yourself, come back to your center, come back to your heart, come back to the sovereignty within your own mind. Do what you love to do. Not what John, Mary, or Alice loves to do. Do what you love to do. You like riding horses? Go ride a horse. You like swimming in the ocean? Go swim in the ocean. You like taking a bubble bath? Take a bubble bath. You like eating chocolate? Eat the chocolate. Do things that are pleasurable to you. Don't do things that feel good because someone else feels good when they do it. Do whatever you need to do to get back to your sovereignty is what I'm saying. And the fastest way to do that is to do things that you love to do, sensory things that you love to do, because we're sensory beings in this material world, on this material plane. So taste, hearing, vision, things that are pleasurable to you. So I'm Rebecca. So I'm going to think, what, what is Rebecca like? Oh, Rebecca loves fantasy art. I was up last night looking at fantasy art. So I'm going to look at some fantasy art. Oh, Rebecca loves cacao, pure chocolate. I'm going to eat that. Rebecca loves violin. I'm going to listen to some violin. So when I do these things, especially a combination of these things, um, it brings me back to myself and what I love and who I am. And your will is connected to your desires. And we cannot deny our will. So do not deny your desires. And the fastest way to get to that level of denial is to... Uh, trick yourself into thinking that someone else's desires are yours. That's how you give up all your power. That's how you give up your own will. You can analyze your desires later and shift them and purify them and whatever, but first just get back to them. Who are you? Who is Rebecca? What does she want? So a suggestion is you can write down the five senses and next to each of your senses, write down one thing that you're going to do today or this week that satisfies that sense for you. Again, not for Alice or John, for you. Come back to yourself. Use the senses to come back to the self. Then when you come back to yourself and you feel connected to yourself, watch how the inspiration comes in again for what it is that you're meant to do here now, in this lifetime, on this path. Get back to yourself. And step by step, you will be shown the way. And then from there, the relationships that we're meant to have and the dynamics we're meant, we're meant to experience within them will naturally unfold. Phew. Okay, so how is our environment either supporting or not supporting this process? What information can we get from reflecting on our environment? <laughs> Another pentacle. So we have three pentacles cards now. <laughs> They're all pentacles, actually, because the final card is a Hebrew letter. So every tarot card that we pick today 
is the Pentacles card. And the Nine of Pentacles is about fulfillment, carrying our thoughts through to manifestation in a way that feels fulfilling. So it would be good, it would be helpful to look at other people. This is what I'm getting really clearly right now. Tell me if this resonates with you. It would be helpful to look at other people who are sovereign. Look at other people who we define as independent and fulfilled. What do, what do they look like? What does their life look like? Interview them even if you must. What do they feel like? What do they look like? What is life like for them now that they've reached a certain level of success or fulfillment? And maybe upon interviewing them or looking more closely, you see that they're not actually fulfilled. And maybe it's your own definition of fulfillment that is perverted or skewed. So looking at examples of fulfillment or what we perceive to be fulfillment and prosperity in this material world will help us get clearer on our definition of fulfillment and prosperity and it will help us subconsciously move toward creating a vision that will bring us our next level of fulfillment. It's never going to be the last. There are always new levels of achievement. There's always another round. There's always another round. But that's how we learn and grow. We think, oh, this is my new vision of prosperity. And then we manifest that. And then we think, oh, well, now it's time to refine it and tweak it and move toward a new uh, vision of prosperity, right? But all we can do is focus on the next level of achievement. We can't think that far ahead. Oh, there's always, there's always, there's always going to be another level. Okay, but let's just focus on the next one. That's all we can do. So look around your environment, look around to your friends, your family, who is somebody that models prosperity in your definition? Who is someone that reflects that prosperity? Who is someone that reflects fulfillment? How can you look around you to gain the inspiration you need to create your next vision of prosperity so that you can go and get it so that you can go and get it. And then once we're there, we might be like, oh shit, I hate this. This is not what I want at all. But until we get there, we, we can't refine what it is we want. We need to understand somehow. We need to go through the process. We can't be so afraid of never achieving fulfillment that we don't even take the first step. We have to somehow squeeze out the inspiration to create a vision of fulfillment and prosperity and then go for it. And then from there, we can learn, refine. It's through experience, through gnosis, that we learn and reflect. We learn about ourselves and we can refine the vision and move toward the next level of what it is in our minds, uh, you know, to manifest prosperity, what that looks like, what that feels like. All we can do is think of the next level of it. And so there's plenty of inspiration right now around us in the world. There is plenty of inspiration to reflect on. What is prosperity for me? What does that look like? How can I go get that? How can I manifest that? How can I achieve that? And again, the relationships that are meant to support that or the relationships that are meant to fall away, all that will become clear. Three pentacles. Oh boy. Let's see who the ally is. And this came up in my mind a few minutes ago when I was talking about the senses, and I'll tell you why. The ally is the Hebrew letter He. It's the fifth letter of the Aleph Bet. It's actually connected to Arcanum 5 in the tarot, the Hierophant, He. And the hieroglyphic symbol that's connected to this Hebrew letter, because each Hebrew letter has a pictorial symbol connected to it, is a man with his hands up. So when you think of five, you think of five senses. This is why I was thinking of the Hierophant and why I was thinking of the letter Hey a few minutes ago as I was saying this. The best way to be inspired, right? A man raising his hands is like divine inspiration, right? Praise, receiving that light into the body, into this form, 
through our electromagnetic um, points, right? Our hands, our feet, our heads. Five points, like a star. We receive that light and the electromagnetism flows through us, through those points, through the head, through the hands, through the feet. And then we experience that light through our senses. And this is how we learn about ourselves. This is how we gather knowledge, which is what the Hierophant is all about. He's the teacher, but he's also the student. And this is an archetype that lives within all of us. And so he's the one that gathers knowledge and then shares it. But through what? Through his senses. Five, the five points. The five senses. So in order to get back to ourselves, the star that you are, continue learning and growing and be the best example we could be, like the Hierophant is, we need to experience our sovereignty through our senses. The Hierophant is also all about the ha, hey, Hierophant, hearts, compass. The Hierophant knows the way. The Hierophant knows the truth. Five comes before the six, the fork in the road where we have to make an important decision. It's that crossroads. So the Hierophant comes right before that. It's the part where we really get in tune with our own truth. There's a very specific element of cultivating sovereignty in that part of the story, in the tarot. When we come to the Hierophant, it's all about really getting in touch with the guru within our own hearts, our own truth so that we have the ability to make any decision we need to make along the way, so that we have the ability to decide what it is we want to do next, so we have the ability to decide what prosperity and fulfillment means to me, so we have the ability to decide how to get there, and then ultimately what relationships are going to support that and what relationships are not. So the Hierophant is the guide throughout the week, returning to yourself, returning to the star that you are, experiencing life through the senses, your senses, not anyone else's, getting really back in your body, grounded in your body through the senses, pleasurable things that feel, sound, look, taste, smell good to you, not to Alice, John, or whomever, to you. So get back into your body through the senses. Remember your sovereignty through there. It's like I'm seeing this vision of like the lights coming in, right? You have the hay, the hieroglyphic symbol of the man holding his hands up. He's receiving the light. It's like you, the star, you receive the light. That's the electromagnetism that comes in. Okay, that light is circulating in my body. I, I want to experience it. So through my desire and through my will, I'm going to presently and consciously move through my material reality, experiencing it, smelling it, tasting it, seeing it, hearing it, right? And as I'm experiencing that, I'm cultivating all this, this information and that's building up inside of myself. That's this like electricity that's building up inside of myself. It grounds me in, it reminds me of who I am. It makes me feel more like Rebecca. <laughs> and not like someone, anyone outside of myself. So I see it as like the star, you're a star gathering the light and multiplying it within. And that feeling builds up in your heart, the center of the star, right? Builds up, builds up, and you, you feel that so strongly that it's impossible for you to move from that center and become too caught up with anything or anyone outside of yourself because you're so feeling the weight of your center, which is the light in your own heart. So that's where we're at. Get that inspiration, gather that inspiration, do it how we know how because we're human, right? We're souls embodied. So do it through your senses and get in tune with yourself, with yourself, with yourself, with yourself. And when you come back to yourself, the next step will be shown. Be patient, the new moon is next week. Right now, just do whatever you can to get back to yourself. And then next week, you will have set your energies up in such a way that it supports this incoming message of what the next step is, where you're meant to go, what you need to create. See, we don't need to know yet. It's not the new moon. We're closing up one cycle and beginning another one. We're in that in-between stage. The best thing we could do right now to close up the last cycle and prepare for the new is to stop looking outside of ourselves, stop looking, you know, stop overanalyzing our relationships with others and come back to the relationship with self because that's truly all there is. Come back into your body, use the senses as the gateways back into the center. 
ground in there. And next week, little by little, the pieces will come together. Step by step, the path will be paved and you will know which way to go, what projects to begin. Your vision of prosperity and fulfillment will begin to manifest. And again, from there, all relationships will become clearer. Everything that we're meant to communicate in relationships, which relationships should stay, which relationships should go, how, it, how all the pieces are fitting together in relation to your plan will become clear. But how can it become clear if you don't have your plan yet? How can it all be clear if you're not even grounded in your own center? How can it become clear if you're so busy giving up all your power to everyone and everything outside of yourself? Come back, come back. Figure out what it is you want. And don't rush yourself. Again, it's not the new moon yet. It's not time yet. Just come back to yourself. Use your energy to come back to yourself in a sensory way. And that's perfect. Right now we're, we're um, moving out of Leo into Virgo. So we're coming into this like very earthy energy. Perfect time to get into our senses, ground back into our bodies, be more detail oriented in ways that we like, not somebody else. Come back to yourself. Happy manifesting, enjoy, hold your vision of prosperity, fulfillment, remember who you are, you're a star, tap into the guru within, the heart's compass knows the way. Thank you guys for joining me for this activation, I appreciate you. I will be shipping out some books this morning, so if anybody wants to get in on this book drop, uh, just reach out, private message me, or send me an email to bexmagic at gmail.com, B-E-X-M-A-G-I-C-K at gmail.com. I have books one and two available. Um, my children's book is super making progress, you guys. I'm going to be working on it all day today. Uh, I've done a few pages just this morning. For those of you who don't know, I'm illustrating my first book, and it's a children's book, and this is my most favorite project yet. So super excited. I feel the momentum building, and it's going to be done sooner than I thought, I guess. So I'm very excited about that. For those of you who don't know, we have two private groups on Facebook. One is called The Royal Path, where we talk about archetypal activation, archetypal awareness, numerology, astrology, things like that. The other group is called Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, Crew, C-R-E-W. And I post in there every week my personal interpretation of the current Torah story and Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah. So if you're interested in that, please join us. I typically also go live every Friday night for the Ancient Melody uh, Shabbat candle lighting blessing. So if you want to hear that and join in on the ritual, please feel free to join our group. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Have an amazing week ahead.